the house that he had come to the notice of the minority caucus that certain members of parliament had taken actions that contravene the provisions of Article 971G and 971H of the Constitution. Specifically, the Honorable Minority that alleged that A. Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka member of parliament for Amenfi Central, who was elected on the ticket of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, had filed with the Electoral Commission to contest the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections as an independent candidate. B, Honorable Andrews Asiyama Hamwako, independent member of parliament for Formina, and currently serving as the second deputy speaker, had filed to contest the 2024 parliamentary elections on the ticket of the new patriotic party, NPP. C. Honorable Kwajo Asante, member of parliament for Suhum, who was elected on the ticket of the NPP, had filed with the Electoral Commission to contest the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections as an independent candidate. And D, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, Member of Parliament for Aguna West, who was elected on the ticket of the MPP, had filed with the Electoral Commission to contest the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections as an independent candidate. In the light of these developments, the Honorable Minority Leader invited the Speaker to declare the seats of these four members vacant in accordance with Article 971G and 971H of the Constitution 1992. According to his submission, if these seats are declared vacant, the resultant effect on the composition of this House would be that the NDC would have 136 seats, while the MPP would have 135 seats. That's making the NDC the majority party in Parliament. This statement sparked intense debate in the House, with members raising questions of constitutional interpretation and the role of the Speaker in the enforcement of Article 97 of the Constitution, particularly in the matter of the vacation of seats by members of Parliament. It is therefore incumbent upon me, as Speaker of this House, to address these issues thoroughly. In doing so, I am simply applying the provisions of the Constitution 1992, Parliamentary Act 1965, Act 300, the Standing Orders of Parliament, 2024, Presidents, and Established Legal Principles. The issue of interpretation and enforcement of the Constitution lies in the bosom of the Supreme Court 
and not that of the speaker. And so I proceed to tell you my understanding of Article 97. Honorable members, at the core of the Matro Leader's statement are the provisions of Article 97 1 of the Constitution of Ghana, 1992, which govern the circumstances under which a member of parliament shall vacate his or her seat in parliament. The relevant subclauses of the provision read as follows. Article 91 states, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. G, if he leaves the party of which he was a member, at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. Or H, if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party, unquote. Honorable members, my humble view is that Article 97, 1G and H operate to prevent what the old school refers to as cross carpeting or carpet crossing as witnessed in the early legislative councils and parliaments of the Gold Coast and the Republic of Ghana respectively. Cross carpeting is now part of what is referred to as defection or party switching, when a member of parliament who was elected on the, part, on the ticket of one political party leaves that party to join another, or when an independent member of parliament joins a political party after being elected as an independent member, or a party member acts similarly. The concept of defection raises significant concerns about the integrity of political representation. When voters elect a candidate, they do so based not only on the individual's personal qualities, but also on the political party platform they represent. Party switching or defection, therefore, can be seen as a breach of the mandate and social contract between the member of parliament and the electorate as it changes the political dynamics that the voters originally endorsed. The prohibition of defection as reflected in Article 97, 1G and H serves several critical purposes in maintaining the integrity of parliament, parliamentarians, and protecting the trust and will of the people. The provisions of Article 97, 1G and H are designed to safeguard the principles of party loyalty, voter representation, and political stability. Defection is prohibited because it undermines the trust placed in members of parliament by their constituents and can lead to instability in parliament. These constitutional safeguards ensure that members of parliament remain accountable to both their parties and the electorate, and they prevent members of parliament from engaging in behavior that could amount to fraud or disruptive of the functioning of parliament. Honorable members, it has been suggested by some members that the provisions of Article 97, 1G and H, which address the vacation of a member of parliament seat due to defection, should be understood prospectively. That is, they should apply only to future parliaments and not to the term of office of parliament when the act occurs. While this argument may appear to offer a practical approach it must be firmly dismissed as both untenable and inconsistent with the constitutional purpose of these provisions. One may ask 
what is Article 97 purposed to do? The clear intent of Article 97 1 G H, to my understanding, is to preserve party loyalty, engender trust, and protect the mandate of the voter and representation throughout the MP's term of office. These provisions are designed to prevent political instability, as I stated, opportunistic behavior, fraudulent representations, and disruption of parliamentary composition during the term of a parliament by ensuring that members of parliament remain faithful to the mandate given to them by the electorate at the time of their election. To understand these provisions as only applying prospectively, meaning that they will take effect only in future parliaments, will nullify the purpose of Article 97. The provisions of Article 97 and the consideration are intended to address breaches of party loyalty and independent status as they occur during a term, ensuring that the House's composition remains consistent with the electoral outcomes. If Article 97 1G and H were to apply only in future parliaments, it will render these provisions effectively superfluous. By the time the next parliament is constituted, any member of parliament who has defected or sued political allegiance during the current parliament will no longer be in violation of the provision. They will start the next term aligned with their new party or as an independent. There will exist no defection, and the violation will effectively be wiped clean at the start of the term of the succeeding parliament. If the understanding of the provisions was futuristic, members of parliament could freely switch parties or become independent during the term of a parliament and pretend to be representing the interests of the people who elected him or her or the party on whose platform he or she wrote to parliament while paying loyalty to a different party or group of people with no immediate consequences. This is precisely what Article 97 1G and H are meant to prevent. The provisions exist to curb, as I stated, defection, as it happens, not to offer a free pass to members of parliament to change allegiance during their term and only face no consequences, even in future electoral cycles. Under Article 97 of the Constitution of Ghana, there are indeed different modes through which a member of parliament shall vacate his or her seat, and these can be broadly categorized into two groups. The A is the one that we refer to as automatic or procedural, and the B is a matter of determination of fact. Certain modes of vacating a seat happen automatically or procedurally, either through the direct operation of law or institutional processes. These are relatively straightforward and do not require external determination of facts. For example, the dissolution of parliament, the election as speaker, the expulsion for contempt, and resignation of a member of parliament. The second category deals with others where you require determination of facts. And those are the other provisions identified in Articles 97, 1, C, E, and D. These involve more complex factual situations that are less clear cut and may be subject to dispute, making them matters that likely require determination to ascertain whether a vacancy has occurred. Honorable members, it is important to note that the determination of whether a member of parliament has resigned from their political party or has joined another party is a matter of fact. In 2020, 
during the tenure of Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Kui as Speaker of Parliament, a notable instance occurred when the New Patriotic Party notified the Speaker that the Member of Parliament for Formula, Honorable Andrews Asiema Amwako, was no longer a member of the party. The MPP requested that the seat be declared vacant in accordance with Article 97.1 of the Constitution, citing that the Member of Parliament had filed to contest the upcoming elections as an independent candidate, which violated the party's constitution. In response to this request and notification, Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Quay proceeded to declare the seat vacant. However, I must emphasize that this ruling made by the previous speaker does not bind other speakers, including myself. It is important to point out that in the present matter before the House, the notice of poll is available at the Electoral Commission on all the 275 constituencies. I have duly taken note of the notice of the poll. And further, more, no member in making comments to the statement made to the House by the minority leader denies these glaring and notorious facts. And so, what is my role in all this? To inform the parents of a vacancy of the seat of a member under clause 1B to E, G, and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House that by the notification of the polls, the following members of Parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in Parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti Region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your patience. Thank you.